that are in the movie as well. Um, so I'm assuming now that it's been released since uh, this past June or July, I believe is what I remember seeing, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yeah, it was in June. Yeah. June. Okay. So from that point on to now, uh, how have things changed for you personally, as far as, you know, the, the attention you're getting with the film or the amount of work that's been, has come up as a result of it as well? Does anything like that change for you at all along the way from that, from that production? I think the biggest thing was just the continued reaction from people who have seen the film, who are survivors themselves. Right. Um, that has been like the most mind blowing thing to come out of it so far for me. Right. Um, I think, you know, it was helpful to have done the festival circuit right. um, and we were really blessed and did very well um, in the circuit. And I definitely think that that has helped also. Um, but I think for me, the biggest thing is just hearing the feedback from survivors so now do you have any intention if this if this were to continue getting more attention did you did you ever have any intention of wanting to do this as, as a full feature length film if the opportunity would arise from that so this is something that i have been tossing around the idea for since we made the film mm -hmm. um people have been asking me that since day one mm -hmm. um and I'm very torn um, because on one hand, I would love to, because I, the topic is so important to me um, and I would love to continue to shed light on it in a, in a larger way. Um, but also it's hard when you take something like this and turn it, stretch it into a feature because the last thing that I want it to be is preachy. Um, so if I were to do it as a feature, there would have to be a really strong um, intent and story hook behind it. So I'm still kind of tossing around the idea, but undecided. What, what about that preachy aspect of it? Are you trying to avoid to do? Well, the goal the whole time with this film in the short form was that right. I wanted to, to portray assault in the most real and authentic way possible. Right. Um, so I would definitely want to continue with that in a feature. I just, I feel like a lot of the times these types of things, when they are stretched to features, like I said, become very preachy and almost like a PSA, mm -hmm. um, which is what I don't want it to be. I want it to be a real portrayal of, of assault um, because this stuff unfortunately happens all the time. So right. yeah, it's, it's, I'm not against it. I just kind of got to make sure that the story hook is strong enough for it. And if, um, if it were to come to fruition there, are you trying to aim it to be as necessarily as graphic as possible, but just to be as close to the realism as possible, as far as how far the assaults can go, depending obviously on the person, but also with the repercussions of what the character is going through. And now that we have more time to spend with them to see those uh, consequences of those actions there, are you looking to more in, in that same vein or are you completely just doing an overhaul and try something else completely different, but keeping true to what the, the story is gonna be all about as far as the sexual abuse is concerned? Um, no, I'd wanna continue on with the story that we had in the short. Um, okay. I definitely think there's a lot of angles that you could approach with it and different directions you could go. Um, and I'm, I am interested in that. And I do think that there, are, there's a story there to tell. I just don't want to rush into it and mm. then um, tell a version of the story that later I'm like, oh, that wasn't the right version to tell. Mm, okay. So let me ask you about your, the next set of things you were doing since uh, you've gotten um, more attention with Anchor here. Cause I've, I came across some things that I've learned along the way that I'm hoping if you're able to indulge here with uh, as far as what you have been working on, because I know that the, as last I've, I checked in here that you were, in post-production at the time uh, for a, a movie that you had called, done called uh, Void, along with a documentary film called uh, Beatdown, which deals with mental health. And at the time it was going through, it was, I guess it was supposed to be going through the, the festival circuit. I'm not sure what that status of it is right now. So is that something that has been, um, has, it, has it gone through the festival circuits at this point with, uh, with what uh, you've been able to accomplish after Anchor? So Beatdown is currently doing the festival circuit. We just started okay. that a few weeks ago. So okay. undecided kind of how that's going to go. Um, and then Void, we're still in post-production on, um, but that will also do the festival circuit when it's finished. Is that also a short film too? Or is that going to be a feature length film? It is. Void is a 15 minute short. Okay. And are you able to indulge as far as what the plot is about? Or is that still under? Um, I can tell you a little bit. So okay. it, it deals with toxicity and relationships um, mm -hmm. and kind of the exploration of, of what that means. Um, a lot of the times the lines are very blurred. Yeah. Um, so it kind of tackles that. 
So I'm curious about that because I, I want to actually go back to uh, one of your earlier films you've done, Dissension, where uh, I actually liked what you had done with that short film, where um, it's a very, you mentioned before about blurred lines. And um, so when I saw the movie, um, I remember distinctly thinking at, at one point, and, I'm, and this is the part where I'm hoping you understand where I'm coming from, but I thought it was going to be more of a, you know, more of a standard fare about, you know, the the man is going to be against you know, or is going to be for the uh the uh, abortion rather than the female at this point so the tables were flipped around um you had mentioned about vulnerability at least to authenticity so there's a lot of different things that i've kind of picked up along the way with that with that film along with anchor that seems rather consistent how you like to approach the the difficulty of like how good people in a really bad situation have a make make a tough choice but it's a choice that they know that they have, they make, it will possibly ruin them for the rest of their lives. Uh, so to prevent from that happening, they make a choice where they're going to have to hurt someone else along the way just to keep their status, if you will. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was hoping that you can uh, indulge me with more about how you come up with that, that thought process for you to be able to uh, put that into the story. Cause I know a lot of it is a lot of collaboration that you have with the actors. So I'm assuming there's a lot of, of that as well too. So for you, what's the first thing? Is it more about the idea and then flesh out the ideas with the actors or do you have everything set out as far as what you want to go for and then give the actors the ability to, to interpret what they, the characters are going to want to do? It's a really great question. Um, so I have, I mean, I have the story kind of fleshed out and mm. then I bring my actors in, um, but things do tend to sometimes change. Um, right. I'm very... I'm a very collaborative director. So mm -hmm. working with my actors is really, really important to me. Um, and I like to say like, you know, actors come to set having done their homework and they do their research and they know what they, how they think that the scene should play out. I do the same thing, but being, you know, an individual, I really only have my own perspective to draw on. So I like to kind of hear from other people in terms of, okay, here's the scene. How do you see this playing out? Um, and so it's not uncommon for things to then shift after I've worked with my actors. Um, so definitely, it, I do have a fleshed out script and story when I present it to them, but then things do tend to change. Do you, are you a, a demanding director in terms of like you, you're, you have the, the, the essence of the story in place. So are you wanting, or do you allow for the freedom to have the actors possibly change the course of the story to help and make it better? Or are you already having it set in mind about this is the story, this is how it's got to be, but I'm willing to allow you to change, you know, these little details, but nothing to the point as far as the end product is concerned. Like, is that, what, what's your take on that as far as that approach is concerned? Yeah, I'm very open to improv. Um, okay. As long as it's not changing the outcome of the story, um, okay. because most of the time I have a, a goal or a, in something in mind that I really want to achieve with the film. Okay. Um, so I'm open to improv like within the scenes and changing dialogue because I always say, you know, what might sound natural to me coming from you won't sound natural. So just kind of go with what feels natural mm -hmm. as long as it's not changing the direction of the story. What's actually the biggest, um, the biggest hurdle for you to have to overcome when you are putting the, the project together, or at least as far as like the, the inception of the idea or the actual start of the production, what's the difficult thing for you to, to get the ball rolling for you? Like what actually starting the script. I like to spend a lot of time with my characters and the concept and like fleshing things out. And, and I'm, I'm the type of writer that really kind of surrenders to the emotions of the story. So I kind of go there emotionally. Um, and so I get very attached to my characters very quickly. And I like to get to know them as well as I can and all the little details before I craft the actual script, because then it makes it easier for me to write the script, the better I know the characters it just seems to flow out of me. So I think the biggest hurdle is saying, okay, we're moving on from development and we're going to actually start writing. Mm. So do you think of the characters first or is the story first before, before the characters? Like what's, what's the most uh, common thing and how you approach it? You know, I think it happens simultaneously. Okay. Um, it's not, for me personally, it's not something where I'm like, okay, I have this character who is this type of person. What is their situation? It usually comes together in terms of this is this person and this is their story. Mm -hmm. um, now all the details kind of come later, but the general concept of who they are and their story kind of comes all at once for me. So when you are like, when you're putting all those pieces together, as far as like the, 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 the concept is concerned, um, do you, do you, 
because and I know you take inspiration from other sources out there to to help uh, put the pieces together. But are you also putting a little bit of yourself in there too, as as far as like um, different different aspects of your life that you may relate to the story that could help influence the character's journey? If you will. like, do you do a lot of that as well, or are you just simply whatever whatever this character is going through? Even though I don't have that I don't have that experience, I'm gonna t- do my research and then compile this something to make a story out of it. Like, is that What's your approach on that when it comes to the writing process? I think it's a little bit of both and it depends on the project. Mm, Um, I think, but no matter what story I'm telling, I think that there is a little piece of me somewhere in the story in one Mm. of the characters. Um, And that's kind of like how my way of working through emotions or whatever I'm feeling at the time. Um, So I think that no matter, even if I'm writing something that has nothing to do with anything that I've ever experienced, I think that still a part of me somewhere is in the project. Um, and then I've had other films like my short film Void where the, I, it was something that I had never experienced, but throughout the writing process, I ended up putting in a scene that was a conversation that I directly had line for line um, in my real life. So I think it kind of just depends on the project and where it feels natural to go in and that sort of thing. Do you feel like this is actually uh, therapeutic for yourself? Because, uh, you know, w- when I heard about your your um, your introduction or when you first wanted to get into acting, because that was the, the first um, thing that you wanted to do. And then directing kind of just came later on when you are going through the um, writing, the writing process. Is that therapeutic for yourself? Like, is there is there something about that that part of the, the process of you creating the story that helps you personally. And something that I've realized even more so recently with my latest project that I'm working on is the thing, one of the things, that's not the thing, I love so many things about what I do, but um, one of the things that I I love the most is that filmmaking, writing, and directing really has given me the opportunity to be exposed to things that I would never be exposed to in my day-to-day life ever. Um, For example, I'm working on a series right now and the topic, it, it was something that I knew about and I knew that it existed and I knew it was a very real problem, but I did not know all the ins and outs and the realistic harsh details of what it is to be someone living with that. Um, And so looking back on that, I'm just like, I can't believe I didn't know that. And now having spent the last three, four months deep in that, it's just like a whole new world for me. And I think that it's definitely helped me see things differently. Um, And so I'm just really grateful that I get to have opportunities like that through what I do. And the series you're talking about, this is the one that you're, because I I heard about this as well too, that you're looking to hopefully uh, shoot out in West Michigan too, right? Is that the one you're referring to? Correct, yes. So how's that coming along right now for you so far? It's good, it's good. We've been in development for two, three months now. and we're moving into the script stage. So that's exciting. Oh, okay. So it's, it's still a bit of ways to go before at least um, to to get some people to agree and wanted to start the production. Or that's, that's still a bit of ways to go at this point? Yeah. Okay. But so far it looks pretty promising for what you, from what you guys are putting together here, right? It does. Yeah. We've had some actors express some interest. So that's okay. exciting. I can't talk about the details of that, but it's right. exciting. There's some potential there. So cool. All right. Well, um, so let's uh, let's move on to something here that I, I was actually wanted to ask you about with your upbringing when it came to your introduction to, um, you know, your love for film. And you mentioned before that it was The Wizard of Oz that started that for you. What I was curious about with you is that when you watching that movie um, and then moving on to your next phase, as far as the next set of films you've come across here, like for, what has changed for you uh, with that um with your love for film as far as like you know understanding the the storytelling understanding characters understanding the development but also in this case now now that you're in the the creative aspect of it here too what for you would you say has changed the most as far as like your overall love for cinema you know when you're first exposed to it it's exciting because there's storytelling and it's like oh this is such a cool thing I'm entertained by watching this I just love the story um and then now having been involved in it for years I think it's just such a powerful art form um and everyone is so receptive of what you're seeing on the screens today that to me that is like the biggest thing that has changed is just the perspective of how I look at the power of film and it used to be like an entertainment thing for me and now it's entertainment but also there's uh, substantial power behind it 
when you when you're making your movies, are, are, is your intention to always have some sort of uh, message left behind with the film for, for someone to walk away? Or do you do you ever just focus on how, making it come up with a good concept, but make it entertaining? Like what's what's your approach on that? Because, I mean, for me, when I watch your movies, I, I don't I don't necessarily think of oh this looks like a flashy film. It's more it's, it's definitely much more realistic when, in terms of the story storytelling approach. Um, so I, cause I know that, um, I know that every, every director and writer has a certain way they want to go about it, but for you, um, was that always your intention or did you have that, 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 that incentive to want to try to make it entertaining for, and in some cases, the mass public, if you will, like, is that, what, what's, what was your take on that? So I always joke that I couldn't tell a story without some sort of message behind it. If I wanted to, um, okay. I, it was never something that I said, okay, I'm going to start out and make films that have deep messages behind them or important messages behind them. It just kind of happened. Um, and then when I was looking at the projects that I was doing, I was like, wait a minute, all of these projects have something behind them other than just entertainment. Um, so it wasn't something that I was aware of. It just kind of happened. And then so I it was become, organic for you. Yeah. I've become more aware of it in recent years. Okay. So what's something that you would consider doing down the line if given the opportunity that would would be kind of your, out of your comfort zone? Like what would be that that form of a genre or film in, uh, altogether that you would consider doing that still is that's still within your sensibilities, but something that would ne wouldn't necessarily be something you would be known for doing? Like what would be that that genre or type of film you would go for for that? I would love to do a sci-fi. Oh, really? I would love it, but my brain doesn't. I like there are writers who are world builders and they right. are remarkable and I admire them so much. And then there are writers who are more grounded in reality and I'm definitely more grounded in reality, but I would love to do a sci-fi. So would you be willing to work with a co uh, with another writer that could help with the world building aspect of it? And you focus on the, the story, Terry character development aspect of it too. Would that be something? Oh, absolutely. That Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't turn down an opportunity. I would look at it for sure. Um, okay. My biggest thing is just if I'm passionate about the story. Mm -hmm. So if I'm passionate about the story and the characters being told, then absolutely, I'm going to take up, take the opportunity. Um, so, you know, while my heart is in these, you know, deep rooted emotional dramas, right. I definitely could see myself going outside of that also. Um, but always kind of coming back to those emotional dramas. So right now you're in Michigan at this, at this time, right? Is that correct? I am. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where you're originally from too, correct? Correct. Um, so uh, in, in Michigan right now, because, you know, Sam, Sam Raimi is also from there as well too. And I know he's made a lot of his movies out there as well, um, where he's made uh, some films that have, you know, obviously made a landmark in cinema. Um, so at, at one point I thought that with, considering that he was at the heights of his career where he was wanting to bring production back to Michigan, that it was actually coming close that it, that would be the case. Uh, for at least some of his later movies um for you right now um because I, I know you mentioned you talked about before about you wanted to work on this project the series you're working on right now and bringing the production out in west michigan um do you see that potential of eventually that coming to fruition for the state or are you are you as you're getting more exposed to that are you starting to see the 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 difficulties of how it, it could actually be brought into there with you know what there might be some things that may prevent it from either happening or make a, take a long time before it actually happens. Like what's, what's your perspective on that now? Well, I certainly hope we can bring film back here. It's so beautiful here. Um, you know, I think in my experience, everybody has been so willing to help and excited to have film in the area. So based off of my experience, I could see it happening um, without any issues. Um, but again, I'm working in a small town, so I can't speak for the entire state of Michigan. But through my experience, I definitely think that it's very possible for it to come back to Michigan. So as time has gone by for you in, in, in the whole creative process, um, do you feel like uh, you, you've, uh, your, your perception has changed about how you look at uh, the film industry now, uh, having, some, having that experience as far as putting the, the, the productions together and then seeing the end results and going through the festival circuits. Like, is there, is there a perspective on how you looked at it before that has changed along the way and how you look at it now and how you may want to approach it differently moving forward, especially when now you're in the, in the process of trying to develop this series. Uh, is that, is, has that also changed for you as well too? Um, yes and no. I think for me, the biggest thing that has changed is just a sense of awareness of what goes into movie making. Um, yeah. 
I know, you know, before I was involved in it, it was just shocking to me that you didn't film a movie in order. Um, mm. And so for me, it's just an appreciation and an awareness of what goes into it and each of the crew positions and how important each person is on the set. Um, so that's the biggest thing for me. Okay. So l- let me ask you about your, um, your, your upbringing in, in Michigan. Um, so for you, um, w- uh, how would you describe yourself at, uh, growing up uh, back at home and, you know, learning, you know, going through the motion of acting and going through the motion of learning how to getting the opportunity to direct? Um, were you were you always um, very um, were you very were you were you always a very uh, determined person to want to take on those challenges to go through auditions and having to act in front of people and then directing and learning how that works and how that works but that was better for your sensibilities like have you have you learned how to overcome certain things that you probably weren't that you were very um self-conscious about confront certain things that you may have never had done before if it wasn't for you taking on this passion if you will yes um i think from the acting side when i was first exposed to acting I didn't like it. I right. I was I didn't like being in front of people and it, it made me very insecure. Um, but then the more I did it, I, I grew to really, really love it. Um, and then on the directing side, that was more of a natural flow for me. Right. Um, when I took that on, it just felt natural. And I think being a director has really helped me kind of break out of being an introvert um, in ways because on the set, you're the leader. You know, you have people constantly coming to you asking for questions and answers to things. Um, and so that's really kind of helped me break out of that. Um, so yeah. Do you, do you feel like, um, once you started doing that more often that, um, your, your ability to, to interact with other people, uh, especially when it comes to all these different departments and having to learn how certain departments work when it comes to the filmmaking aspect of it, um, do you feel like that has given you more confidence with yourself to, learn how to communicate with people and, and learning to be upfront with them or learn how to be direct with them when it, when it comes to certain things that may be uh, delaying the production or um, something may be missing along the way that someone didn't prepare for it. How do you interact with that? Like, is there, was that another learning experience for you to learn how to deal with that as, for yourself uh, going through the motions as well? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Without a doubt. I yeah. Without a doubt for sure. But was that difficult for you to do that at first or you just made yourself do it and and you just kind of learned along the way and what what to do and what not to do? I think anytime you take on something new, it's difficult Um, and there's a learning curve, but I was very passionate about it. So I just kind of did it. Okay. Well, so you're, you're, when you're going through the the directing phases now, um, what, what's the part that you least, um, like doing when it comes to directing because i i understand this is a very difficult and tedious process um and sometimes you just don't have the time nor the funds to to get what you want shot or done um so is there anything in particular for you that you don't like now that you're going through the through the experience that um you don't look forward to when it comes to the actual filmmaking process itself to be honest no okay i i welcome the challenges and i i mean i often joke that i have two sides to my creative brain i have the writing side and then the directing um and my director's brain hates the writer because you know i've created the very detailed story and now we have to find a way to execute it um but i also welcome the challenge um and i think that every time i set foot on set it's an opportunity to learn which is something that I'm constantly striving to do is, is learning and grow as both a person and a storyteller. So I don't, I don't think that there's anything that I don't look forward to in directing. So there's really nothing one, there's not one particular process of the, of the filmmaking um, that you don't um, look forward to at all. There's, there's not one little aspect of it that comes to mind that would stick out as a, as a, as a sticking point for you. I mean, no, I really, really? Okay. I really enjoy every element of it from, you know, script work, which I guess is not directing, but Mm -hmm. to the collaboration with my team. Um, I love casting. Um, Casting can be difficult. So I guess maybe that's an answer. Casting at times can be very daunting. Like for anger, I was terrified going into casting and I was not looking forward to that. Why is that? I guess, well, because I was asking for so much from my actors um, Mm -hmm. and I didn't know if we would be able to find people who would be willing to do that. So okay. that was where the fear kind of stemmed from there. Um, but in terms of casting, 
I guess that would be the answer because it is difficult sometimes to narrow down talent when you have so much just incredible talent in front of you to say, okay, mm. what do, how do we narrow this down? Mm, okay. So when you're, when you watch, when you're actually shooting the movies, uh, well, in this case, let's talk with anchor when you're shooting anchor and, and, and things are starting to progress with the production. Um, did you ever had any point of a doubt? Like, I don't know if this is going to turn out as well as I thought, because you know, the dialogue is not coming out as good or the shots isn't coming out as good as I thought or you know we don't have the time to get this done is there anything that comes to mind as far as what uh what was one of your biggest uh, moments of insecurities during that production absolutely um there's a scene right before Haley goes into the shed it's the first time that mm -hmm. we see her interact with alec and we shot that last on our last day of shooting was that on purpose um no it was okay. just the way that it worked in terms of like shooting schedule and location okay. and what we had access to and at what time okay. um and we we had used up a lot of time shooting the assault scene which we needed to do um and then we were running a little bit short on time and so we had probably i don't know six or seven shots in that plan that we wanted to get and we only got two um and so so I remember thinking, gosh, this scene is so vital to the whole story. If we don't have what we need, people aren't going to be able to follow it. Um, so walking out of that, I was very concerned about the future of the film. Um, but when we got into the editing room, I felt a little bit more relaxed about it. Uh, the editing process uh, for you, are, are you hands on with the editing or do you have someone else do it for you? And then you just monitor what they're putting together uh, as you're as they're putting all the pieces together for you for you. So I've done it both ways. Um, okay. For Anchor, I edited it myself. Um, so everything from start to finish. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I did that, and then other. I've worked on other projects with an editor. So I've I've done both. Which one do you prefer uh, uh, doing as far as editing is concerned? Do you prefer to have someone else do it for you, or you actually rather be hands on with the uh, process? Um, I think I'd rather collaborate with an editor. Why is that for you? I don't necessarily enjoy editing. It's very tedious. Um, mm, okay. So I, I would much rather hand it off to someone who really enjoys that process. And I also think that I'm too close to the story to maybe be able to edit it in the most effective way possible. Um, as the writer director, there are moments that I might just be really, really, really attached to that I'm like, we're not cutting that. But in the big scope of things, it doesn't work. Um, so handing it off to someone who's maybe a little bit more stepped back and out of the project um, is is a good way to do it, in my opinion, um, from my experience. Uh, so that's kind of <laughs> where that stems from. So did you feel, did you actually notice that uh, after you had finished editing Anchor or was it something you already knew beforehand, but had to decide you want to take it on anyways to see if it's actually something you felt uh, that would be the case for you when it came to the editing process? I definitely learned it through Anchor. Okay. Um, up to Anchor, I'd edited everything by myself, um, which mm. was good for me to go through the process. And I'm glad that I did because it helped me better communicate with my editors. Um, but I, I did notice that there was more of a tendency to keep things that we maybe didn't need. And then when I take a step back and then go back to it and it was like, oh yeah, we don't necessarily need that moment or to linger on Sierra for that long. Um, all things that someone who's a little bit more stepped back from the project would catch on to right away. Okay. Uh, so here's another thing I, I wanted to point out to you because I, um, you, on your channel, I have, I come across uh, some things you've done outside of your filmmaking, which has to do with um, more or less like the, uh, I, maybe I guess the documentary uh, aspect of your, of your directing where you had gone to a, um, a Sean Mendes concert and you have got pictures, you know, videos of fans who you had asked about, you know, their, you know, the, you know, why they are big fans of him and, and, uh, and you've actually got a bit of a reaction about um, your, the, the process of putting all those together and how you were able to get the shots, where you shot it and so on and so forth. Um, you, when you, when you started going through doing that for yourself, um, was that something that was intentional that you wanted to do to put that together? Or did it just come organically for you to figure to see, well, let me try this along the way. Cause I know that you had kind of talked about it before, but I'm, a, I'm not, I wasn't sure whether or not around that time, if, you know, you want to do a documentary film had happened before this or after the fact, uh, when it came to, um, the subject matters that you wanted to get into here. Yeah. I just stumbled into it entirely. Um, I had actually gotten day of tickets to the show with mm -hmm. a friend of mine. 
um, and the venue overbooked. And so they gave us barricade seats to like make up for it. And I was like, okay, so like you're, I mean, you can't get any closer than that. Um, so being someone who loves film, I had my little vlog camera with me and I was like, well, I'm close enough. Let's just get some footage for memories. It might be fun to have. Um, and then I got home and I was looking at the footage and I was like, Hey, some of this is actually really interesting. Like he's looking right at the camera. This is cool. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, maybe there's something that we could do here. Um, and my friend had already gotten tickets for another show on his tour. And she was like, Hey, you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to. And so I kind of went into that show with a plan of, okay, maybe I could make a little like tour highlight video here. And I talked to some fans and then edited it together. So it just, I stumbled into it. And so when you, when you actually put all, all the pieces together and seeing what, how it turned out, were you, did, was there a, a side of you that thought, you know what, I think I want to try this too, as far as like um, compositing like uh, shots together for an event, or I think I might want to go with uh, doing documentary now, seeing what I made able to pull it off here, uh, talking to people and, you know, getting at that or that, that authentic reaction uh, at, at, during that moment. Like, is that something that had changed for you as far as how you want to look at directing uh, at least for your own films or a, a, as far as directing the documentaries are concerned? Um, yes and no. I, okay. I did consider after I did that and I saw the reaction and I, I was happy with it myself. Um, I was like, well, maybe I could do this. Maybe this would be fun. Um, but when I started looking into that, I was like, but my heart is really in narrative storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I ended up going back to that. Okay. Well, would you ever reconsider doing that again, if you had the opportunity to, to do it on, let's say on a bigger scale, uh, if, if you have the chance? If it was something where I could come back to, to narrative film, um, I've seen a lot, you kind of have to pick one or the other, yeah. um, just because of the time commitment and what that means to do something like that. Um, mm. But if I had to choose, I would stick with narrative. Okay. So when you, uh, you know, you had shared about your, your love for, uh, John Mayer, uh, cause I know you had, uh, you're a big fan of him. And, um, so I was actually uh, curious to learn about, uh, what are the things that you're into as far as music is heard? Because, uh, um, you know, John Mayer, I, I do believe he's one of the greatest singer songwriters in the last 20 years of what he's able to pull off. Um, sure. and I, I don't think, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do give him credit for that, but the fact that he's been able to work with, you know, other entertainers, if you will, uh, famously with Dave Chappelle, you know, where he was, you know, one of the skits, um, it just shows that he's been able to kind of branch off and do other things, take risks, and then was well, well received as a result of that, and then still go back to what he does. Um, so, you know, when you're, to me, it almost sounds like you, you like songwriters who are storytellers. That's what it looks like to me. Um, and yeah. that's more or less my case as well, too, um, because John Mayer is a great storyteller. Um, I love the song that he had done called Daughters, which I think is one of the greatest songs ever written. Um, and, and it had such a, and even, I don't think he has like any kids. Am I right? Is that, is that, a, is that true? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Well, for him to write that song and have that impact, I was like, that's a really good songwriter for him to compose, compose the music together and then have, have that effect on you. What other things are you also into as well that maybe would not be considered something that you, most people may not know about you as far as uh, would be kind of, out of your realm, if you will. Um, oh my gosh, I don't know. I listen to everything. <laughs> I really do. Um, Find everything. So, I mean, I listen to everything except for country. I'm not a huge country fan. Okay. Um, but I mean, there are some country songs and musicians that I like, so I right. guess you could even throw that in there. Um, but I, I'm just drawn to the storytellers do you feel that there are some good artists now as far as mainstream is concerned or maybe artists that people never heard of before that you've come across and thought these guys are incredible with what they do um so i mean is that is that something you feel like that's that's kind of losing its uh its theme as far as the storytelling aspect in the music or uh or do you feel that it's it's actually getting better or you know it's always going to be there no matter what what's your take on that i think it's it's there you just have to look for it Okay. Um, it's not always as present in, or present in mainstream. Um, right. but I think if you, if you really look for it, you can find it. Okay. So if you could choose a, um, if you were given an opportunity to direct a music video, uh, for a band mm -hmm. or a musician, uh, apart from John Mayer, what would be like the first, uh, band or musician that would come to mind that you would be willing to take the time to direct the music video for if given 
full control to take on that, that um, you know, the, the way the video is going to come out? I think Louis Capaldi. Really? Yeah. I, okay. I've been really into his music lately. Um, and I think that he is also a storyteller. So I definitely would be interested in that. What is it about his music that you, that apart from the storytelling aspect, that you feel that you, you would connect with the most, that what you could help bring the vision to the music? What, what about that specifically would connect, that makes you uh, drawn to that? I think the emotions that he mm-hmm. intends are very present and very clear, um, which is something that I really admire. So I think that anytime that there's a specific and clear intent for something, it makes it easier to develop a story around it. Okay. Is there any, anybody else too that you would want to look into as well, if, if given the chance that you would possibly want to direct that may not be considered in your wheelhouse, that would be considered a, a, a fun challenge for you that, um, again, that you may want to take on if given the chance? Um, a really far out there one would be Lady Gaga, um, yeah, just okay. because of like the big productions and um, yeah, I just think that would be so much fun. Okay, that's interesting. I actually never thought of that. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. She's actually a good storyteller as well, too, considering her music. She is. Um, and a good actress as well. I think uh, yeah. with what she was able to pull off in uh, A Star is Born, it actually blew me away. Um, okay. Well, let me ask you about one other thing here, too, because um, I want to make sure that I, I, that I bring up something that I, that I thought was very interesting about yourself, which is that, um, you know, when you, uh, you know, uh, being, a, uh, being a woman in, in directing now, Times have changed a great deal, right? When it comes to female directors, female screenwriters, actors, you know, it has, the landscape has changed a great deal where it's actually more respect given towards them. Um, more women are being, uh, are being brought up as not just a female director, but rather just a good director in general. And I think that's, in my opinion, that's very important. Is there any like experience like that you have come across that made you realize that, okay, things have need, needs to change uh, or things are looking to change along the way? I actually think it's been the opposite for me. I think okay. I'm coming into the industry at a prime time for women. Um, there are more opportunities now than ever. And I think that that's just going to continue to grow. I hope that it continues to grow. Right. Um, so for me, it's been the opposite. People have encouraged me to tell the stories that I want to tell um, from the perspective that I bring to it. So I actually think it's the opposite. And so and do you see, do you see, do you see that the industry uh, from what you're going through right now um, going to get better uh, or do you still think it's going to take a lot more time to have the, uh, the respect that female entertainers in the industry are, you know, have, you know, have been longing for, for quite some time because, you know, we've had, you hear t- plenty of stories of, you know, of women, but then there's also women of color, you know, women uh, who have a, a different set of backgrounds that, you know, a person who's, you know, a, a, a white female actress or director may probably have more opportunities, but a person of color may necessarily may not have those same opportunities, even though they have the same um, capabilities. Um, so, you know, do you feel like in time that that would, that things will get better for, the, for all female entertainers, because we have the old school guys still at the head of the table who have not let go of that mindset. And I think in time, once they step out, someone else will come in and say, all right, well, we're not going to do that that thing anymore we're going to do this from now on so do you feel like that's going to be uh, improve along the way for you uh seeing how women in industry are going to be uh, respected and how they're going to be treated along the way as being equals uh in in the uh in the industry definitely i think that we've made small steps in the right direction um okay. and that we're going to continue to make the right uh move in the right direction because it's exactly what you said. The people who have that older mentality are the people who are in charge right now. Mm. Um, but I, I think that it's been more widely accepted of bringing women into film and that we are just as capable of creating important films or entertaining films or films that are big blockbuster films. Mm. Um, so I think that it's, it's just going to continue to get better. Oh, but you know, do you feel like when you, if a woman in a position like that makes those changes, if they don't do what people expect them to do, do you feel like that could almost uh, be a detriment or do you feel like, you know what, that's, it's just part of the process that we're just gonna have to fight through it. Like what's, what's your opinion on that now? I think it's just part of the process. I mean, anytime that you change a big idea or concept 
in anything, there's going to be a little bit of, of heat coming at you. Mm -hmm. And especially because like Marvel is such a big company and they have a very specific vision for what they do. Anything mm -hmm. that's going to steer away from that is going to create conversation in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, it's no matter who directed it, you were going to have a little bit of that anyways. Would you ever, ever consider doing a superhero genre too? If, uh, I mean, I know you mentioned before, as long as the story is good, the characters are great, but wait, if that, is that something you think you could, uh, you would want to take a take on, or would you prefer to go focus on other genres if, as far as storytelling is concerned? I think it goes back to the story again. If the story mm -hmm. is good, I'm, I would take it on for sure. I want to say thank you very much for taking the time here. And, um, if there's anything else that comes up along the way that you're promoting here, please reach out. I'd be very happy to look into it and pro help promote it as well, too, uh, especially with the new film that you are so in um, the post-production on. I'd be happy to help and look into that and uh, help promote that as well, too. If you have awesome. Thank okay. you so much. And thank you for having me. Oh, thank you very much for your time. But you guys have a wonderful evening. You guys stay safe out there. You too.